As an occupational therapist, I work with a lot of children who have difficulty with handwriting, so I wanted to share a few of the tools and tricks I use to set them up for success. Let's start with slant boards. A slant board essentially just is a surface that allows you to write at an incline, and these are such a great tool because they put your wrist into extension. Let me tell you why that's important. Take your wrist and flex it forward and notice how your fingers go out straight. This would be a really awkward position to hold a pencil in. Now, extend your wrist and you'll see that your fingers naturally flex and your thumb comes in opposition or facing your fingertips. And this is actually a really ideal place to hold a pencil. So your hand is doing less work when your wrist is in extension. Another great thing about slant boards is that your student has better posture. They don't have to look all the way down at the table because the surface is elevated a little bit. It also makes it easier to copy from the board because there's a shorter distance for their eyes to have to move when they're looking between the board and their surface. Now slant boards can be a little bit pricey and so an alternative is to make your own using a binder. This is about a three inch binder and you just turn it sideways and you can use a rubber band to place your paper in and that will hold your paper in place while you're writing. Another tool I really like is adaptive paper. Two of my favorites are three-line and graph paper. So many primary schools will use a three-line paper like this when they first introduce handwriting, but it's a great tool for older students who have difficulty with letter sizing as well because students can see where their small letters need to sit. I also like to increase the support by using a highlighter to highlight the bottom line, and that really helps students who are having difficulty. You can also pair that with a letter chart with similar highlighting so students can reference that while they're writing. For students who are having difficulty with spacing, I recommend graph paper. Graph paper is really nice because they can write one letter in each box and then leave an empty box for where the space should go, and that helps them practice that skill. Another idea for practicing spacing is to get a popsicle stick. So with a popsicle stick, a student can simply write their word, place the popsicle stick after the last letter of their word, and then pick up their pencil and move it over to their side and write their word. It's a great editing tool as well, because your student can go back and place the popsicle stick between two words. And if the letters are not covered by the popsicle stick, they know they have correct spacing. And if it is, they can check and make sure it's clear that those are two separate words. Now, some students have difficulty with writing because of grasp. And when you are th thinking about grasp issues, you really wanna think about making your utensils shorter and thicker. If you have a student who's holding their pencil awkwardly at the end, or using a whole fisted grasp, it's a good idea to break your pencil or crayon down to a smaller size. This size is about the size of breaking a pencil in half and sharpening that, and it's the perfect size, especially for your five to six year old kids who have smaller hands. I also like to break crayons, and I will break them down to about a one inch size. The really nice thing about this is you can only fit three fingers on, so instead of telling a student repetitively to use three fingers, they can just be practicing strengthening their hand with a utensil that is perfectly sized. When you think about making things thicker, you can buy a thicker pencil. The thicker it is, the less pressure and the less strength the student has to have in order to use the pencil. If you don't have access to thicker pencils, you can put tape around them or you can get a pencil grip. This type of pencil grip simply makes it bigger so that it's easier to hold, but you can also get grips that have spaces for each finger to remind a student tactilely where their finger should go. And then there are even more structured grips. This one's called the grotto grip that physically restricts if your finger can move to a different place that's less efficient. So I know that handwriting is a complex and really important task, and I hope that these tricks and tools will help you and your students feel more successful.